there's a fellow on YouTube by the name of Sean Hughes, and he does some amazing engraving. Seriously, his artwork is amazing, his skills are amazing, he seems to be very, very good at what he does, and he's very open about it. He shows you how he does it, and he even shows you some of the tools that he uses. Some of his videos show you how to make your own air-powered engraver, and I thought that was really cool. I've never done engraving before, I have absolutely no artistic ability, but I like to make stuff. So I went to the local big box store and got this 120 volt inflator. It was about $30, so this is a 120 volt inflator so that I don't need a battery in the garage, I can plug this one into the wall. So, here it is. This inflator has already been modified, and I modified it such that it's reversible. If I need to use it as an inflator again in the future, I can do that, because you never know. So, let me take it apart, and I'll show you uh, the modifications that I've made. So, inside here, oh, inside here, there used to be a solid piece of metal under here. This piece used to be this metal thing in this bag. Used to go in here and block the airflow. So, that had to be replaced. This was just a ring turned on the lathe goes in between those seals there. The other thing that had to be changed was the piston. That's the piston in there. I could pull this off but I'm not going to. You can see in there there are four little screws. Those screws used to be holes. And those holes used to function as a valve because they were covered with this little piece of silicone. So that was a flap valve and those have been threaded with screws driven into them and uh, that effectively stops any air from going into or out of this piston from the regular intake. So all it does is oscillate air up and down. So give me another minute, I'll put this thing back together. I'll show you how it really works. This heat sink is totally fake. It's just a piece of plastic. Okay, all back together. It's oscillating the air. It's just pushing it back and forth. So, now let me show you the second part of this little project. How to make the graver. Various plumbing, soldered together, roughly. Copper tubing elbow, copper tubing. There's, uh, in here, there's a spring, which I'll show you in just a minute. This piece on the top was turned on the lathe. This piece right here, and this high-speed steel graver bit was just purchased off of eBay. It's uh, eighth inch, I think. So yeah, let me take this apart and show you what it looks like on the inside. This is the part that was turned on the lathe. All it is is a flat plug. You can see it's been hammered on quite a bit now that I've fooled with this. It just has a hole in it. One of these three screws is also used as a set screw even though it's not necessary because I didn't go all the way through the back and this is just crammed in there. Inside, I can get them out, here we go. We have a little bit of spring and this was kind of trimmed to length while I was testing it to the right length that would actually work. This little bit of cylinder was also turned on the lathe and honed a little bit so that it would fit reasonably well in this copper tube. That goes in there. And then not wanting to make another one of those when it turned out to be too short, I just shoved a nut in there as a spacer. Basically extending that piston a little bit further. So, let me put it back together and I'll show you how it works and what it actually does.
For now, I'm just going to put one of those screws in there. I'm not sure it matters. There is one other thing I need to get, though, which is the speed control for the pump. So while I was testing this out, I was a little bit dismayed at first to find out that it didn't really work. The piston didn't move like I thought it would. It turns out it was going too fast. So I'm going to use my trusty Harbor Freight, uh, what do they call it, a router speed control to slow the pump down. I don't know. And it's a rough rig, as you can see. I just shove it together out of other air parts. Alright, so we'll get it dialed into the right speed and uh, see if I can show you what it actually does. Right there. You can hear the sound change when it gets to the right frequency. Like a little jackhammer. There it is. There's the main piston stop. Just like Sean's design. There's a hole that you can put your finger over to stop it. Let's see if I can actually uh, engrave something with it. Something other than my finger, that is. Keep in mind, I'm no engraver and I'm no artist. There you go. Yeah, not as good at it as he is. Let's see if you can see that. That is a little tiny, poorly made scroll in a big piece of brass left over from the Olympic medal project. Huh. Works pretty well. A little bit slow. Need to work on that. Let's try a few more things. Let's just try some straight lines. Flipped. That one went shallow. Nevertheless, they are engraving. Went a little bit deep on that one. Let's try a piece of aluminum. Here's some aluminum plate. I presume it's 6061, something like that. Yeah, there you go. Nice little curly thingy. That's pretty cool. It likes the aluminum, nice and soft. <laughs> Gotta work on the placement of that air hole. In my, in my hands. Quickly do. Oh yeah. Whip. Flip. Anyway, you get the point. If you actually know what you're doing, unlike myself, you'll see that I'm not doing it very well. But 
tool certainly helps. I tried engraving by hand without the tool, and it was basically just slipping all over the place. cool stuff. Thanks, Sean, for the idea. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the Sean Hughes Engraving YouTube channel for more information on this engraver design and to check out Sean's amazing artwork. Also, check out my CNC gold medal video for more information about the big piece of brass I was engraving.